Hey guys, and welcome to a new video in this computer vision tutorial. In this video here, we're going to compare the CPU versus the TPU here in OpenCV. So we're going to load in an image from the webcam. We're going to do some image processing to that image. And then we're going to time how long it actually takes to do that image processing. And so we can actually see how fast the GPU is compared to the CPU. But first of all, we're going to join the Discord server. I'll link to it down in the description here. And you can join the channel, chat with us about computer vision, deep learning, and so on. You can also become a member of the channel here if you want to support the channel with a small monthly fee and everything will go to create more and better quality content here on the channel so thank you guys so we'll first start in the opencv documentation here because this video is kind of like a like a short introduction to the cuda module that we're going to use from opencv so we're going to use the gpu accelerator module from from opencv with both c++ and python and i'm going to show you some examples both in c++ and python but in this video in this video here we're going to do it in c++ i'm going to load in the image as I already said we're going to apply filter to that image with a really large kernel and then we're going to see how fast we can run that uh, algorithm or like that image processing technique on an image on a gpu compared to a cpu so if you just go in here in the short uh, introduction where we can see different kind of modules that we have in OpenCV, then we can actually go down into the main modules that we have. We're inside of the main modules here. We have a list of all the modules. We can go down here to this CUDA Accelerated Computer Vision, which is the module that we're going to use throughout the next couple of videos. So I'm going to show you how we can actually like, use this CUDA Accelerated Computer Vision module. We're going to go over like how we can set up a matrix, how we can use that matrix uh in our gpu so we actually like upload our matrix to the gpu and then we can download it after we have done the different kind of techniques that is built into the cuda module here. so here we can see the different kind of things that we have built into the cuda accelerator computer vision module so if we're down here and just look at these different kind of things we have some different kind of like image pre techniques that we can use operations on matrices we can see we can do background subtraction video encoding feature detection and description and so on if you just go into the core part here we can see like the initialization and information the different kind of like data structures that we have in the CUDA accelerated computer vision because we're going to use some other different kind of matrices when we're going to work with the CUDA accelerated computer vision so we actually need to have a special a, a specific matrix for that and then we upload that matrix to our gpu and then do our operations on that so if we go down here in this video here, we're just going to use some uh, literal filter. So we're just going to apply some image filtering on our image. So we're just going into the image filtering here. We can see the different kind of like filters that we have. So we have this common interface for the CUDA filters. So we can access these different kind of filters. Uh, so we just have all the different kind of things that is built into the CUDA module. We go into the documentation here and read about it. And if we just go back here again and see other different kind of things, in the next videos, we're also going to talk about like how we can actually like use stereo vision on our GPU to calculate and estimate depth maps, uh, disparity maps, and so on. We can also do some other different kind of like optic detection here on the, on the CUDA accelerated computer vision module, image processing where we can actually like process the college base that we're in. We can do histogram calculations, half transform, and feature detection as we've been over throughout this computer vision tutorial here, where we talk about these different kind of things and also the theory behind these things. Um, and then I'll show you how we can actually like, apply it in code on a CPU. But now we're going to focus on how we can do it on a GPU, which is up to like four or five times faster and even like sometimes like 10 to 20 times faster when we're running our algorithms and our computer vision applications on the GPU compared to the CPU. So now we're jumped into Visual Studio Code here and I'm going to show you how we can actually like, set up a short uh, program here. And we can load in an image, upload it to the GPU, and then we can download it again after we've done our processing. And then at the end of the video, we're going to run that actual like uh, algorithm. We're going to see how that filter affects uh, the processing time. So we're going to compare the CPU versus the GPU here at the end. But first of all, here we're just going to include the different kind of modules. So we're just going to import this uh, in processing uh, module here. So we can actually use the in processing for our uh, CPU. And then when we're going to use the different kind of built in methods in uh in uh, the the, com uh, the cuda accelerated computer vision uh, module then we're going to have this core slash cuda here and also the cuda image processing module here so when we have actually like, included these two we can now go in and use the different kind of methods that is built into uh, the cuda uh, accelerated module that we have in OpenCV. so we're just going to use the namespaces here then we're going to open up our webcam so when we can actually just use this cap here to read in an image uh, like image by image from our webcam then we're going to create a, a function here that is just going to do the CPU test. We're going to create a similar function for the GPU test. And we're going to do pretty much the same. But the way that we set up the matrix, how we read in the image, and how we do the processing is different uh, when we're comparing it how to do it on the CPU compared to the GPU. 
So here we're just going for the CPU. We're going to have a while loop that is just running as long as our webcam is open. Then we're going to have a matrix here where we just have this matte object here or like this data structure here where we're going to store our image when we read it in. Then we're going to have this Boolean is success here. If our image is read in successfully, it will just set this Boolean here to true. And then we're going to read in uh, our, our image here from the capture. So it, it will read in the image from a webcam stored in this uh, image uh, matrix here. So then now here we're just going to check if our image is empty and if it's empty we are just like printing out that we could not load in the image then we start a timer here so we can actually like time how long it takes to do this uh literal filter that we're going to do down here with a really large uh, filter kernel so we can actually like see how much it takes off the processing time when we're applying like large filters or we're just having a lot of different kind of methods and algorithms running on our image uh on the gpu and the cpu so here we're just going to start this tick counter and then we're going to have a matrix uh, for the result. So we're just storing the result of our bilateral filter in this matrix in this matrix here. And then at the end of the program, we can actually like just display and im show this resulting matrix. So now we're going to apply this bilateral filter here. And this is inside um, because we're using uh, STD here and CV. Then we're actually like just going to use the CPU version of the bilateral filter here. So it will correspond to that we have CV uh, colon colon bilateral filter. Then we're going to input uh, the first input here is the image that we want to act like apply this filter to and then here is the output where we want to where we want to store the results from our bilateral filter then we're going to set the filter size here and here we just have like the color space here so it depends on your applications and stuff like that and how much you actually like want to to apply this literal filter here but like if you're around like 150 it will look like a lot of like uh, cartoonies and it, it really depends how much you want to denoise your image uh, with this value here but i'm just taking like a standard value of 100 uh, times 100 and then we have a filter size here of 30. so it's a really it's a really large uh, filter size and we can play around with it and see like how it affects uh, the time and also the program here that, that are running so here we're just going to, to end the timer so we're, now we're actually like just timing how long it takes to apply this literal filler here to our image then we're going to take the total time and the number of fps which is just the end time versus uh, minus the start time and then we divide that by the tick frequency that we have so we actually like can time that pro uh, our program in this way and then we're just going to take the fps here which is the uh, which is one divided by the total time we're going to print out or like see out the number of frames per second that we get to our terminal and we're also going to put that uh, frames per second on our image as well so we're just going to do that uh, with this one here we're going to put the text on the top left corner then we're just going to specify the font and the size and also the color of the text uh, at the end here of this line of code then we're going to show our image with this image show method that is built into OpenCV. then we're going to specify what image we do we want to actually like display and we want to display the result here which is the, the image where we have applied the bilateral filter to with a really large uh, kernel size here then we're just going to have this uh, if statement here where we check if we hit a queue the queue on our keyboard then we will just go out of this while loop here and then we're going to release our webcam and we're going to destroy all the windows that we have opened up uh, with OpenCV. So this is just a function that we can run. It will open up the webcam. It will apply this filter here and time how long it takes to actually like apply this filter with a really large uh, filter size. And then we're just going to display the image and then we're going to do the exact same thing with the GPU. And then we're just going to compare how long it takes to do it on the CPU compared to the GPU. And then we can play around with this filter channel or like this kernel size here or like filter size to see how it affects uh, the time or like the number of frames per seconds that we get when we're running these two functions. So down here for the GPU, we're actually like just going to do the same. And I'm just going to go over this here before we're going to run the actual program. So here it is, it is actually like just the same code. The only difference that we have here is when we're going to use the matrices now, we're going to use this CUDA module. So we need to specify that we go inside this CUDA module. And then we're going to use this new data structure here with the GPU matrix. So in the previous uh, function, we just used the matrix object or like matrix uh, data structure. So that is for CPU, CP, CPU use, but when we're going to use CUDA and the GPU, we need to specify this data structure here as well. So we're going to use CUDA colon colon GPU mat, and then we have this image here for our GPU. We can just go in here, read the image in uh, as we already do, uh, and store it in this uh, image variable or like this image data structure up here. So we have actually like stored our image uh, in the usual way. We're just reading in our image to this uh, matrix object up here or like class up here. 
and then when we actually like want to upload our image uh, from like the cpu to the gpu we're going to have this upload method here that is built into cuda so we're just calling this im gpu that we created up here and then we call dot upload and then we're uploading the image that we read in from our webcam so now our image is actually like on the gpu and when we apply these different kind of like uh, fillers or like other different kind of methods in your own applications then it would like to like do all the processing on this on the gpu and then later on as i'll show you we're going to download that image from the gpu that we've done all the processing to and then we're actually like it can store that in another um uh, in another image that we can then show on our computer here so here we're just going to check if if this mgpu here is empty because then we couldn't load it into our gpu again we're just going to have this tick timer here and we're going to start it and end it after we applied the filter and in this function here we're going to apply the filter from the cuda module so we have all of these different kind of filters built into the cuda module as well from the image processing and also other other different kind of methods from OpenCV, as you can see in the documentation that i showed you in the start of this video so we're going to use CUDA colon colon again, the literal filter here. So instead of just a literal filter from uh, OpenCV, which is using the CPU, now we're going into the CUDA module. We're using the TPU to actually like apply this filter. And we're just going to specify the same things here again, the input image, the output image, uh, the filter size, and the things here that are just talked about in the previous function. We're ending the timer. We're calculating the number of frames per second that we get. Then when then now we need to actually like get our image from the GPU down to our image matrix again that we can then im show later on here in the program. So we're just going to have this im GPU here, which is the image on our GPU. Then we're going to download it that image onto our image here. So we're just going to specify this reference to the image, which is just like an ordinary CV colon colon mat um, data structure here. Then we're going to download our image from the GPU to this image uh, variable or like this image uh, data structure here. And then we can use that to actually like uh, put our number of frames per second and also to do the im show uh, down here at the end of the program. So we're downloading our image from the GPU and then we're displaying um, our image data structure like the ordinary like standard data structure that we already know with, the, with just a matte object down here we just have an if statement again checking if we hit q and then we just release our webcam and destroy all windows so all of the code here is the same as in the cpu the only difference is that we're actually like uh, applying the filters or like the methods from the cuda module and we're uploading our image uh, to the gpu and then we're downloading our image again after we're done the processing and that's the only difference between these two functions here so if we're going to go down here to the main function we can actually just run the cpu speed test here first so I'm just going to do this here. We're going to build the program here. And then after we build a program, we can then run it and see how many FPS do we actually like get when we're applying this filter or like this literal filter here on the CPU. So we can see here, it's not the webcam. It is really, really lacking when we're, apply when we're applying this huge uh, filler here with a filler size of 30. We get around like four FPS here, like 4.5 or like 4.3 FPS here. It's really laggy. We can see that we're actually applying because if we get like we're denoising our image and we get this cartoonish uh, look here on our image but we see that it's just really laggy and we can use it for anything if we want to use like this huge uh, filter, filter size here so if we just hit Q here we will terminate our program and then we can go up here and run our GPU test instead of the CPU test we're going to build our program and then we're going to run it afterwards so now we're running the program here, it will open up the webcam, but now we're using the GPU to do all the processing here instead of the CPU. We can see that we get over 100 FPS now, uh, around like 80 to 100 FPS. We can see that it is not lagging anymore in the image frame. We still get this cartoonish look, so we get the exact same result as the CPU. We can just see that it is up to like uh, 40 times faster, like it's just really, really fast. Like. 30 to 40 times faster when we're actually like uploading and doing just one uh, method or like one image processing method here on the cpu compared to the gpu i know it's a really large uh, filler size here and in real time applications and stuff like that you wouldn't use that but maybe you will use like several or like 10 5 to 10 different kind of methods on your image and that will take up a lot of pre-processing or like a lot of processing time as well so if we just go up here, the last thing that we're going to do is just changing this, uh, changing this uh, filter size here. So we could maybe like set it to 50 here and we can go up here again to uh, the CPU version as well, change it to 50. So now we have it like an even larger, uh, even larger filter size here in this example. If we run with the CPU here again, 
in the last example with the with the filler size of 30 we only got like around 4 fps so now we will get like way less fps here when we're running this um with, with this filler size here we can see that we get around like 1.5 frames per second that we can see here we only get one up here because we're just, uh, casting it to the nearest uh in integer value we can see that it's just way too loud we can't see anything here on the screen we can't use this for real-time applications on a cpu so this is just to show you like how uh how fast it is to run your algorithms on the gpu and if you have a gpu available make sure to use that for your OpenCV applications it's really nice it's really cool to play around with and i have a video about like how we can install uh, and build the binaries and uh, like the source files from OpenCV with gpu support so if you want to use the gpu as you can see here you get up to 40 fps the other one you only got one fps so it's four times faster to run this algorithm here on the gpu so if you're interested in knowing like how we can set it up here with the gpu i'll link to the video up here and you can go check that out because it's really nice it's really efficient it's really cool to use the gpu here compared to the cpu if you have a GPU from NVIDIA available, and I'm currently running on a, G a GTX uh, 1060, so it's nothing special, but we can just see like how fast it is. So if you have a better GP a GPU, you will just get even better results than I, than I get here. So thank you guys for watching this video here, and remember to subscribe button and bell notification under the video. And also like this video here if you like the content and you want more in the future because it just really helps me and the youtube channel out in a massive way and as, as already mentioned throughout this video here we're going to use this CUDA module here a lot more in the in the upcoming videos we're going to see like how we can actually like set up this uh, tpu matrix we're going, both going to do it in python and c++ then we're going to see different kind of methods that is actually like built into the CUDA module and we're just going to have like a crash course on the, the, the CUDA module because it's just really nice and really efficient to run your OpenCV and your computer vision applications on a GPU compared to a CPU. So once again, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.